What's up guys, today we're playing Epic 7 and today we're talking about your daily routine. Epic 7 is a very generous game for all players, but knowing where to get those resources and knowing what to do every single day, that is part of the battle. It's a very marathon game, building upon what you did yesterday to go into the future day after day, then you're going to wake up one day and realize that you have a very amazing competitive account, but it all starts with your daily routine, that way you don't miss anything. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you my routine, where I go, what I do every single day. That way you don't miss those opportunities. Here we go. Logging into the game for the very first time, you're going to get your daily reward. This is sometimes very amazing. You get very lucky, but it's going to help you to build that currency and to build everything up. Now, I don't have too many friends that are active right now. It looks like I only had four uses on my main supporter. Having active friends, very important. That way you get those friendship points. You can then use those to summon, or you can use them to get artifacts that you can build up and get some XP, right? Because we never have enough artifact stuff. Now we're going to go into our daily dispatch mission. I use the number one XP mission. This one is for ancient coins. And the next one is going to be for conquest points. If you have some heroes that have a 10% increased chance and they need XP, throw them in there, free XP, why not? And get that major bonus. Now for most of you, or really for almost everyone, you're going to do the conquest points and the ancient coins. That's gonna give you the most benefit, much more than stigma or gold, stick with those. If you have something like 30,000 ancient coins, maybe you can take one of those points and put it somewhere else into your sanctuary. But for me, I pretty much always stick with these. Now I'm going to go get the lobby pet. Make sure every single day you get the lobby pet. You can get it every 22 hours. Star level does not matter. You're going to get the same reward. So if you log in every single day around the same time, then you should get that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go into Garo. What I want to do is I want to see if he has any Covenant Bookmarks or Mystic Metals. What I typically do is I'll refresh four or five times to uh, to get a drop, and then I'll go ahead and buy that. Sometimes you get it right away, sometimes it takes a while, but if you do these five, ten at a time, here we go, then you can make sure that you're always getting Covenant Bookmarks, and then you'll always stay on top of the Hero Rotation. If you wait until you need them, then what happens is you have to refresh like a thousand times, you get totally burned out, and then your life sucks. So come in, 510, go ahead and leave. Now I'm gonna go into the sanctuary. Now I do it in this order because if I don't go into the sanctuary right away and I start playing the game, I'm going to forget and I'm going to collect the Heart of Orbis. No matter what the timer is, I always collect the heart because I'm going to forget and then it's gonna get maxed out and then you're not generating resources. Then we're going to go into our Forest of Souls, and we're going to go ahead and click onto the Spirit um, thing, Spirit Well, and then also onto your Penguins. That'll help you get your daily uh, missions, and then we can go ahead and move on from here. So we've done Dispatch missions, we've gone into Forest, we've gone into Heart as well. If you want to, at this point, you can come into the Steel Workshop, do a quick craft. I'm doing Azamatic, and I'm doing boots let's go ahead and pull down some of these okay nothing too special go ahead and get rid of this i never roll anything with a flat uh main stat not good not good we're gonna extract these everything else we are gonna go ahead and sell so that helps you get that weekly mission then if you want to as well you can come into the alchemist steeple you can do something here for your weekly mission. Do I have enough to get boots? I don't think that I do. Not quite there. I need 70 here, so we'll do that a little bit later. But that'll help you get that weekly mission. Now from here, you have a choice. You can do one of two things. You can go straight to your auto battle and make sure your auto battle is going in the background while you're doing other things. Or you want to go into your battles and select which battles that you're going to do. Let's go ahead and talk about that. As we go into battle, my very first priority is going to be for the special events. And this one's Kiss of Frost. This one's very long term for me. I am doing the hell mode. I need 10,000 of these, um, this currency to 
be able to max this out. So not quite there yet. So on a normal day, this is what I would do. I would come in, click on this, start my auto battle, and then go into background battle. Now, for me, the highest priority is coming into battle and going into the automation tower. You can do this once every 14 days. You get a ton of reward. So I do auto tower, then the main uh, side story or special event. Then after that, after that, then coming in and doing your um, your side story event. Side story event, very, very important because this is going to give you a lot of the catalysts you need and a lot of the rewards that you want for further progressing in the game, making sure that you can skill up. You need something like 6,870, so I'm right there. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna collect all this stuff so you can see all the rewards that we're getting. Very nice from Reputation. We'll come in and get some even more rewards for the star level, and then we'll collect out our shop and our quests as well. Takes so much, and you can just background battle pretty much this entire thing. Here we go. Now, what I like to do is I'll just pick whoever uh, side story for the catalyst that I happen to need at that time. If you are a brand new player, then another strategy to do is who you might want to summon for next. I recommend Tamarin because she's just amazing. Other than that, you really don't need anyone else. It's all just going to be preference. So the only heroes that I really want to go out of my way to summon for is going to be Tamarin. And then everyone else you can kind of get organically and naturally. Can I go in and take a new quest yet? I can't. We have one more week to go in and take this quest. So now that we're done with this, we can put it on the side, on the sort of the back burner, right? And start on those other things. The uh, tower, which I'm going to do later, and then the background battle for the Kiss of Frost. Now, if you have a lot of your energy you can do those both at the same time you can go in set your background battle for the event and then also manual on the uh, tower because there's no background battle for tower right that way you can burn a lot of your x or a lot of your uh, your energy if you guys have a ton of energy in your mailbox or you have like hundreds of your leaves i recommend doing this because you're not getting anything if you have a thousand leaves just, just piled up. You're not getting anything if you have a bunch of mail in your mailbox. It's just, it's not benefiting you. Now we're gonna go into our battle. We're gonna go into the abyss. If you're not going to do abyss, then make sure that you go in and purify it. I am not gonna get to it today because I'm super busy. So you're gonna get all these rewards every single day. If you're maxed out in abyss already, go in, purify it make sure that you're getting that then i'm going to go into labyrinth and i'm not actually going to do labyrinth yet i'm going to go into the number one here uh halls of silence in tiro castle and i'm going to go to the hoochie shop so it doesn't matter what team that you select from this you're just going to go through one you know battle of baby monsters anyway and uh and go to the shop now, to make this a little bit faster, I'm just going to AoE something. I'm scared. They used to not have a battle here, and then I don't know why, but the suddenly beginning. there's a battle. Command me. So, normally I would just have someone fast, you know, takes anyone, any knight with an AoE ability, and that's going to be that. But because this is my auto team for the Hell Raid, and these guys are faster than these guys, I don't want to go through a bunch of animations. It's me. So now we come to Hoochie. Let me show you that on the screen. It's right here. You can see him on your map now, which is really nice. And what we want to do is we want to buy any kind of charm that we find, also any kind of catalyst. You can find Mystic Metals here or Covenant Bookmarks. So we're going to buy all those out. People always ask, how do you have charms? How are you able to level up your gear? And so this is a big part. Now we're going to yield. Do not go through the portal. We're just going to yield. And then this is not going to use the currency that we entered with. So we still have four or five, just like we started. Very important, because you don't want to burn down a lot of your tickets, a lot of your uh, entry compasses, because you need those later for going into Hell Raid or even farming resources if you farm resources uh, with the Labyrinth, which is a great source of these ancient coins. 
All right, next up, we're going to go into the pet shop. We're going to go ahead and adopt just the free adoption here. We're also going to go into our pet shop, and then we're going to buy out this normal food. Every one of these normal food that you buy is worth two summoning XP-wise so that you can level up some of your pets. So you're going to want to have these pets leveling up so that you can continue to raise them. Now, this account is about 130 days old now, and so I have... What do I have? I have a five-star pet, a four-star, and two three-star pets. The next one I'm going to be bringing up is this um, pet here because I want to have the next S level on my four-star pet. And that way we can get more currency from the side story, but also that we have all of those S rank uh, skills leveled up already for anything that we're going to do. Then we're going to go in and we're going to select the play button. We want to increase the affinity here Increasing the affinity is going to increase your percentages for all of your skills. So you can do this once per day on every pet. Well, this guy's gonna max out. So this says 13.5. Let's see if that changes. Now it says 15. 13.5 to 15. Amazing, amazing increase for just using up some stigma. And again, we can do that for every one of our pets until they're maxed out. I clicked the wrong button. There we go. And this one as well. Now, if you use this pet to then go to the next star level, this affinity will transfer over. So even though I'm below five star, go with your affinity and make sure that you're continuing to level those up. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna go into summon the fun part. This happens to be an event. Yes, happens to be an event where I get extra summons and they added a plus 10 for your free summons, which is very, very cool. This is something people are always making mistakes on. And so going in and being able to click 10 on the free summons, it helps you just move a little bit faster, especially if you're you know, short on time, if you're going to work or something like that. So what did we get? Not much, we get Yoon, okay. We get Yoon, we get a Rosa, and we get a Cart. Not too bad. No five star though, that's a shame. And there is our 11th summon, just like that we're done. Let's go ahead and collect this as well. Great. Now I'm going to go into the shop before I do anything else. Let's go ahead and go into the general shop. I'm going to come down to the transmit stones. Now, if you are a new player and you don't have things like Zeo, Artemi Mercedes, Straz, Bellion, you don't really need to have these gold transmit stones piling up. You want to continue to collect more and more heroes. And so the only thing you should buy with your gold transmit stones is the galaxy bookmarks. Now, if you have these heroes like Straws and Zeo and you want to get their imprints, save up your gold transmit stones and that way you can uh, buy the imprints for them. But it's really, it's an end game sort of thing. Do not buy the four and five star hero summon ticket. That's just, it's not worth it. You want to get the moonlight tickets. That way you get more moonlight heroes. Then we're going to go and we're going to buy out the Molagora. I also come in and buy this as well. I do not buy the Ego Fragments. I have eight because this is a new account. But generally, because we can get two per week, you're not really going to use these every week anyway. Then everyone should be getting this conversion chest. This is a great way for you to get end game uh, gear. So you want to make sure that you're always getting those. Very good. Then I also get these. As long as I have a decent amount of silver transmit stones, then I'm going to buy the artifact charms. The biggest place you get artifact charm is going to be free, 100% free, through your guild shop. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. Powder of knowledge next. Buy your bottle of knowledge if you haven't already. After that, you're not going to do anything else. Down here, this is a great way to get a single copy of some of the artifacts. But as you can see, I don't have enough. This is going to be very in game. Once you get like through Abyss and you have all these, uh, all of these powders, then you can start to do that. Now onto the friendship. I'm going to buy out the energy. I'm also going to buy the flags every day. After that, I don't buy anything else except for these bookmarks. And I only do that when I'm going to be using those two star um, monsters to either release or I'm going to be leveling up my artifacts. Let's go into the labyrinth shop. The only thing that you want to buy here are these charms. Don't buy this other garbage. If you're not going to play Labyrinth for that day, buy a bug charm. That way you never max out. You get one of these per day. There's no reason to, um, to be maxed out in this ever. 
buy your bug charm. You can utilize these later. Then going into conquest points, here we go. Make sure you buy your Mulagora. We're going to come back and buy this frame later after we get this. Now, I do not buy the energy if I have pending arena sets. So we see that at Challenger 5, you can buy out everything during the course of one season. Coming down here, the Conquest points and newer, these will roll better than the Resolution and older. Every single arena season, you're going to get 10% off of these sets. So what I like to do is I like to gather up a ton of Conquest points. Then when the new season starts, then I come in and I buy out one of these sets. It will take you maybe a year to buy out every one of these sets, but I think it's going to be very good for you because then you get better and better gear. Level 88, that has really good potential. So our arena season is just going to end. It says right here, it ends 11-13, which is in about a week or so. Then you go through a preseason. Then after that preseason, once the arena season starts again, this is going to be now 10% more off, which is uh, like 40, right? I can do math, it's 40. So this will be 30, 10, this one will be 10. Every time an arena season changes, you're going to save 180 points off the original. And because there's six of these here, you're going to save like over a thousand uh, conquest points by waiting until that season now turns over. Next up, we're going to go into the arena. Now, I did this video specifically on a Monday because I want to show you this. Once we click onto arena, then we are going to have the opportunity now to rank up and to select either sky stones or mystic metals you should always pick sky stones because the majority of your mystic metals are going to come from the refreshing the garo shop and also you get you know a small amount from your your guild wars but most of them are going to be from the refresh shop and so you need to get those here now if you really want mystic metals right refreshing the garo secret shop that's your best option but even looking at it in a holistic way, you can buy 50 Mystic Metals for 200 Sky Stones through the Hoochie Secret Shop. So that means that we could buy something like uh, six, six times, whereas we would only get 110 here. So, or three times, sorry, three times, 150. If we bought them just with Sky Stones in the, in the Hoochie Shop, that's 150. If we get them here, it's only 110. So you're automatically selling yourself short. Not only is it a bad idea, but it's also automatically losing value by getting it here. Now what you want to do is you want to come in and do your NPC battles. Now this is going to be important. We'll just click on this one here because you're going to get Sky Stones and also you're going to get Conquest Points, which you need. Now what I do is I come in and I select one person that I can uh, pull down to just wipe them all out, right? And then I get just sort of heroes that need to have friendship. They don't even have gear, really. They're just heroes that are going to go along for the ride. Look at this, no gear. No gear. Now, my Arbiter, not strong enough. I'm not sure. Can he do this? We're going to see. You can just hit the auto button. But just like that, it's all over. If you're a free player especially, no make sure you're doing this. That way you get those Sky Stones and also you get the Conquest Points. When you are playing free to play, you get something like 900 Sky Stones every single week from doing this. Like 30,000 Sky Stones a month or something ridiculous. And so make sure, I did post a video on that as well. So you can see all the free places to get Sky Stones. But I'm gonna utilize all of these. Then the next thing I do is I'm going to just auto battle a lot of this. Now, if you don't want to do your auto battle, then you can come in, you can select the same team, go in and fight. It doesn't matter who you select. I like to select somebody who's a little bit slow. That way I can go through the battles a little bit faster. This guy is not, I didn't think he was gonna be faster than me. <laughs> this guy's faster than 230, my Arbiter's 230. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to lose. We lose eight here. That's going to be all right. Then we're going to do it again. Here we go. Will Maze, your your defense is amazing. You're going to have really high percentage points after this week. Oh, oh, she's right. Oh, okay, look at this. 
So this is a good time to talk about this. You have speed RNG 5%. So that means that at any given match, this person can go up or down by as much as 5%, and so can you. So they're pretty much right even on speed. So you don't know who's going to go first and who's not. Sometimes you get outsped, and that means that you're so close within 5% that um, speed RNG was, wasn't in favor. So we've lost two times, now we're at 3984. Now you get a message saying that you're no longer gonna be affected by victory points. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep losing to this guy. I'm just gonna burn all of my arena flags. Some people have hundreds of arena flags. This is hundreds of conquest points that you're just sitting on, right? And you could be getting three for every single loss and you could go through them every 10, 15 seconds. Look at this, victory points no longer going down, but I still get three conquest points. So that is very important to do. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up all my arena battles, then I'm gonna use up whatever flags I have left and just keep losing over and over and over again. As long as you don't drop below like 3950 or so, then you don't have to worry about it. If people here start to really uh, wail on me and beat me, then I can still come in to like a arena defense loss here and revenge if you have it or i can just select someone else on my list get a win or two and make sure i don't drop rank but typically when you're in challenger 5 this doesn't happen also in champion 5 really doesn't happen you're not really getting attacked so it doesn't really matter too much there so here we go now we're going into the guild this is something that i do like to do having a guild much more benefit even if you don't do guild war so much benefit in having a guild and so we're going to show you that next go ahead and click on the daily reward it amazes me how many people don't do this even when they log in it's you know it's free it's free it's not very much but it is free and i'm just surprised they just don't do the check-in it's so interesting to me we're going to come into aid now the important part about aid is every time that you give aid you're going to be getting these brave crests now what every guild should be doing is they should be trading with each other this guild does the Mana Drake Claw. When you select aid, any one of these that has an eight amount in the hunt, so you can do this one or the Mana Drake Claw or whatever, we're going to request this. Then every time that we give it to somebody, we get 30. Then they give it to me and they get 30. And you generate all these Brave Press all the time, all for free, and that's gonna help you in the shop. Then we're going to come down to donate. Now what I do is I donate 50,000 gold every single day and also these Proof of Courage. You're going to get more Proof of Courage as you're playing, especially when you're doing the Guild Boss. And then donating gold, that's going to help you with the boss, but it's also going to help you get those Brave Crests. Let's go into the Member Shop. Now we utilize these uh, Commander Armbands for the different kinds of artifacts. What I would recommend is getting one Proof of Valor one symbol, one Warhorn. Then from there, you can get another Proof of Valor, or you can start to max out. So what I have chosen to do is go for a max symbol of Unity, because that's going to help me a lot in this uh, meta where evasion is just crazy. Then I would go for max out Proof of Valors, then Warhorn. Then after that, you can come into Guide to Decision or Bastion. Now, I don't really utilize these artifacts a lot, so it's not something that is a priority for me. And then I think Victoria's Flag is the least amount, it's the least uh, useful artifact to have. Mine's just sitting on a Luna because I have no one else to put it on. Then we're going to come in and we're going to buy the Epic Bloom. Again, we see that we're getting a ton of these Brave Crests. Buy your Mologora. Then because I have all of these different kinds of artifacts to buy, I'm not going to spend any of these Commander Armbands on anything else come down here and we're going to buy these catalyst chest it's going to be a rare catalyst with a chance for an epic then we're going to buy out the equipment conversion and then if you're new to the game you can buy this labyrinth compass as well one labyrinth compass even going through and auto battling is going to give you something like two three hundred of your ancient coins so buying this out is basically just turning it into ancient coins you can level up heroes into the labyrinth you can also get more friendship in the labyrinth depending on you know if you want to set up a team for friendship but assuming that you don't then we have these lesser artifact charms 180 each 
eventually you're gonna get you're gonna get thousands and thousands of brave cries. So this is where you're gonna get the artifact charms that you really need. Now, if you're end game and you have all of the artifacts, right? Then I recommend coming in and get the equipment conversion chest. I also recommend coming in and getting the mystic medals. And that's pretty much it. If you're generating a ton of these armbands, then you can come down and start to get catalysts. That way you're always on top of skilling up your heroes, but eventually you're just not going to need these at all. Now, I'm not a captain, but going to the captain shop, my recommendation is to buy the blessing of uh, knowledge, buy the blessing of wealth, buy the energy right here. Do not buy the guild supply chest because look at this. You can buy 10 50 energy for the same price as one guild supply chest. That's 500 energy for everyone inside your guild. This, at best, you're getting Brave Crest, which you already have anyway. Mystic Metals, which is only like 50, so it doesn't matter. Or like 100 or 200 Sky Stones. 200 Sky Stones buying energy, you can buy 180 energy, right? Uh, and then if I just buy this energy, that's 500. So I don't, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me why people buy the guild supply chest. If I, in my guild, get up to like seven, 800 of these, and I'm already buying the energy and still accumulating, then I buy the guild supply chest. Otherwise, energy much better. Then we're gonna keep track of all of these. You wanna make sure that you're using and achieving all of your uh, weekly missions for your guild. That way you can get more and more things, especially coming into the equipment conversion, but you want to at least get the commander armbands. That way you stay on top of that and your guild can continually build up those artifacts. Now let's go ahead and we're going to go into the world boss. I'm going to show you how this works. We got some commander armbands there. When you use your guild members as your supporters, they get the armbands up to nine times per uh, rotation. So two rotations a week, that means you can get something like a hundred um, commander armbands there. We're gonna go into select our team. Now what you want to do is you want to look for enhanced element four and you want something that's 400 or more, 500 is better. Uh, I think mine are all 700 on my end game account. This one looks okay. Now this is two onto warriors and we have the warrior quest. So this will help you to get this because that's gonna give you even more points. But I'm gonna show you how to get those points. Now for me, I just select to go ahead and auto. That's gonna put everyone in. Now because this is a, who is this? This is like an earth boss, right? It's gonna select all of your fire heroes first. Then it's gonna backfill with your uh, earth heroes, your light heroes and your dark heroes. And then if you, don't have any more then it'll start to put an opposite element this is how it goes now on a new account i'm not going to hit you know very high if i can get 500 on all of them that would be amazing let's go ahead and select it now on this guild world boss you cannot beat it it's just a scoring type event to get some of the chests right that's it and i'll, I'll go ahead and talk about that as well so it doesn't matter what happens here you can just select skip and um and the result is the result, whether you wait for it to finish or not. The HP bar is actually a countdown timer that will show you when the next boss is going to start. Let me see if we get some rewards. This is going to be the main source of your pet adoption tickets. So this is going to help you a lot as you're going through getting pets. And then we see that we get some gear. Sometimes you get epic gear. Really what I want are these conversion chests. That'll help me out quite a lot. So with this and this, that's a pretty good run. You can also get some of your epic catalysts here, um, so that happens sometimes. Or you can get Molagora, or you can get Gold Transmit Stone, which is good. So here's how this works. You have the points acquired, this is your team. Then supporters here, that are the supporters that from your friends that you selected. This plus this multiply by 184%, and then you add them in again, right? So it's gonna be 1.4 million plus 700,000. Then it's going to be 1.4 million times 184% plus 708,000 times 184%. That gives you this total score right here. At SSS plus, this is going to give you the maximum amount of rewards. When we go into ready and we go to rewards, we can see that the only thing that really changes is the amount of chests that you get. Now the reward doesn't change when you click on this. We have level 85 honey equipment. 
level 85, it gets right here, I think, where it's 70 to 85 honey equipment. So as long as you can get above 4.3 million every single run, then you're going to be pretty good. Now, not all of these heroes have to be usable. You can take your priests or your soul weavers and you can put them onto attack gear. You can take something, a uh, hero that can't crit and give him 100% crit just to get the CP boost. You're going to utilize him. He's going to do damage and it's going to increase your score into world boss. So if you have heroes that you're not using, but you have all this gear that's sort of sitting around, some of your free gear maybe that when you started the game, like the attack set, the HP sets, put it on some heroes that you don't really want to use or don't really care about. That way you're always maxing out and you're trying to get this 5.3 um, million on each one. Now, having said that, only your ranking counts toward your personal ranking. So you see that I scored like 6.5 million here. And again, this is a new account. Only 4.2 million goes to my personal ranking because your supporters do not count toward your personal ranking. So if you wanted to get a really high ranking, everyone in the guild should put Soul Weavers and knights onto their team uh, of that element right so if you're at like ice element two of the ice knights two ice soul weavers and that way you utilize the big damage dealers the guys that are like your um your uh your warriors your thieves your rangers the guys who hit hard right your mages you want your guys to be those guys that way you rank up really high. So this person up here, 13 million, you know, that's really what's happening is they could have really amazing gear or their guild is just giving a lot of supporters in their supporters and that way they can uh, utilize their big damage dealers to give them lots of points. It's been about 10 minutes and we were able to go through a lot of our automatic battles, things that are very quick to complete, including all of the world boss. You see, I did about 10 million here which isn't bad for an account that's brand new. But the actual drops from attacking the world boss is not really what you want. I mean, they're good, they can be good, but what you really want are the equipment conversion chests. There's not a lot of places in the game that you can go in and do the equipment conversion chest. So make sure that you're doing your world boss, uh, what, five days a week? That way you build up your score and get those chests. Now we have to decide what we're going to do with our actual time. It's only been 10 minutes and I've gotten a lot of the free things, but now we have to continue in order to finish our regular event. So you can go into the Guild War. Now the Guild War is important because it gives you commander armbands, but it also gives you a small source of mystic metals, and then you can get more and more heroes. Come in anywhere you can, try and find a team that you can beat. If you can't find any teams to beat as you're going through it, don't be afraid to lose. You're gonna get much more rewards from losing than you will from not participating first is you don't get any commander armbands for not playing right you're going to get some even if you lose the second is you get more mystic medals for using all of your attacks and losing than you do not playing now if you are very brand new and this team is just blowing you out of the water then go in select ready pick your team then when you can select yield and that way you're just going to lose the fight automatically you don't lose your heroes and you can build up your friendship. Everything you do in the game, any kind of math you complete is gonna build up your friendship. So put some heroes in here that need friendship and then you'll always continue to build. Uh, really go for the four and five star starting heroes because when you get to friendship 10, you get those free Molagora. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go into Expeditions. Expeditions is a very important uh, section that you need to get a lot of your equipment, right? So let's go ahead and we're going into Expeditions here. They just added this little tooltip uh, to get in, and I don't know if I like Unknown it quite yet, but, <laughs> but it's, it's been okay as long as you remember where to go. I have a team for every one of these. I think my lowest team right now is doing about 700,000, and that's the Light Expedition, because I have not finished my Sermia yet. But otherwise, I'm doing something like uh, over a million full auto on every one of these but you get a lot of rewards. And you also wanna make sure that you're collecting the previous month. So I did forget this, the month turned over, I didn't even realize it. Go ahead and receive all to make sure that you're getting all these rewards. This is gonna help you not only with um, a lot of materials like your conversion chest and like your charms, 
but we can see that we have a lot of things for uh, modification stones. That way, when you're rolling gear, it doesn't have to be perfect gear. You can roll something that's like attack, speed, crit chance, flat attack. As long as it avoids flat attack and it rolls everything else, you can mod that into whatever else you might want, like effectiveness or crit damage, something like that. And these modification stones are going to help you because you can start with less than perfect gear that meets your gear score criteria, mod it later, and it automatically improve that gear. Now, modification stones are not meant to give you epic gear. They're going to be min rolls, but a min roll in crit damage is still better than a flat attack, if you ask me. And so you can go ahead and do that. One quick note here, on the premium supply path, buying this does cost 1500 but you're going to be getting more reinforced materials, more Mologora, and again, we're going to be getting these equipment conversion chests. Now, I don't buy this every single month. I buy it on the month that has the material that I need. So if you're primarily farming Wyvern, you can see that when that boss comes up, then you'll now get that reinforced material. If you're primarily farming Banshee, then wait for that one to come up. That way you have enough reinforced materials. If I have, say, like 3,000 or more reinforced materials, then I don't buy it. But this one being new, they're going to need it, and so I don't mind buying it when I have 33,000. This is going to help you get more and more gear. You're automatically limiting yourself if you're using all level 85 gear, or you could be reforging that. And to me, that's going to be worth 1,500 Skystones. At this level, at a like a Challenger 5, that's two weeks worth of arena. So it really depends on what do you want? Do you want to have level 90 gear? Mologora? Do, do you want to be able to summon more Moonlight Heroes by getting the gold transmit stones? Or would you rather utilize that to maybe do energy and do more hunts? Or would you rather utilize that to um, reforge the Gyro Secret Shop and get more heroes? You know, the answer really is up to you. But I think they're all viable methods. When I get to a hunt buff day, I use up all the energy in my mailbox. I also use up all my leaves. And then if I still have hunt buff day after that, I start to burn through sky stones because at the level of gameplay that I'm at, I need to have gear. And you can't get gear if you're not playing in hunt. So I think it's perfectly legitimate to utilize those sky stones that are best going to enhance your account. And so don't forget that whatever level of gameplay you're at, Whatever level of things that you need to enhance to get you to that next level, don't be afraid to spend it. But also, I have quite a lot of Sky Stones because I learned how to manage my resources. Don't just buy everything. Focus. Focus on what you need to be more competitive and then go for that. I spent a few minutes auto battling in tower level five, and now it's time to collect some rewards. So now we're gonna go into our reputation we're gonna make sure we collect the daily reward. Now this is important to do before you get to the levels in automation tower that have the gold amount. That way you get that extra 10%. But also it gives you the 50 sky stones, which is very, very good for, um, especially for free players as they start to level up and as they start to get more and more resources to do things they want, whether that's getting energy or getting new heroes or whatever it is. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our events. Now, if we click on ongoing events, at the very bottom right here, it says watch an ad to get energy up to five times. If you watch an ad, the ad is five to 30 seconds each, and it'll give you 20 energy. Now, this is great for free players because it gives you a chance to give back to the company because you're not really spending money on buying packs or doing anything else to support them. And of course, they don't do this for free. So come in, watch your energy and get that 100. Or watch your watch your ads and get 100 energy. <laughs> don't watch your energy. <laughs> then lastly, is we're gonna come into our regular events. Once you do 20 of anything, whether that's going into your tower, whether that's auto battling and hunt, or coming in to do um, some arena battles, you're gonna get even more energy here. This is gonna give you t 200 energy. Yeah. And then we have a secondary event that has the opportunity to now give you even more on top of that. Clicking on reward details, we see exactly what we can get. 
a lot of times this will also include energy so you're getting more than 200 here i did a video on sky stones and on the energy that i'm going to link in this video in case you want to go and refresh those but they give you a ton of sky stones and a ton of energy every single day for playing the game and just you know hanging out burning time having fun collecting heroes and playing epic seven and the last thing I wanted to mention is that Epic 7 is really designed for you to play three times a day. You log in in the morning or whatever time you normally log in, you burn down the energy, do a lot of these daily routines. Then you log in one time midday to get an extra 100 energy gift. You don't actually have to play, you just have to log into your lobby. And then lastly, they want you to log in right before bed. This will enable you to burn down a lot of the energy as you be cleaning it through the day. But then also, it, when you have that extra space, you can start to build energy overnight, and then it just starts over again the next day. Doing these things with the daily routine will really help you to get all the rewards in the game, even if you don't spend money, but just building day after day after day, making sure that you're always progressing towards your end game goal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give me a like so other people just like you can find that as well. Until next time, happy hunting and good luck on your battles.